If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. In part A, we are being asked to calculate the electric potential at point P, assuming that the potential at infinity is zero. Now, the potential at point P will be created by the three point charges Q1, Q2, and Q3. So we're going to have to look at the formula that gives the potential created by point charges. And so the electric potential symbolized by V created by point charges is equal to a constant multiplied by the charge divided by the distance to whatever point we are interested in, in this case point P. Because we have three point charges, we're going to have to calculate the electric potential three times. So let's set up those calculations. Notice that we are using subscripts of one, two, and three to correspond to the three charges. All of the charges are given in the question in terms of microcoulombs. So when we plug in for the charge, we're going to have to convert those charges into coulombs by multiplying the value by 10 to the minus six. The distances are also given, but it turns out that we have to do a little bit of work to calculate the distance from Q1 to point P. So let's do that. We can draw a line from Q1 to point P and call that line R1. We can also draw a line from Q1 to Q2 and then from point P all the way to Q2. And we can see that we form a right triangle whose hypotenuse will be R1. The question notes that Q1, Q2, and Q3 are situated on a square of side 1.5 meters. So we know that the distance between Q1 and Q2 is 1.5 meters. Between Q2 and Q3 also is 1.5 meters. The question also notes that the distance from Q3 to point P is three meters. Notice that the total length of the bottom side of the right triangle is 4.5 meters, so we can easily use Pythagorean theorem to get the value of R1. And when we do so, we get a value of approximately 4.74 meters. So this will be the value for R1, the distance from Q1 to point P. We can fill in all the charges as well as all the distances. Notice that Q2 has a distance of 4.5 meters to point P, as noted earlier, and Q3 has a distance of just three meters. So let's plug in all the known values. So all of the known values are plugged in. Notice that K is 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. Also remember that we converted the charges from microcoulombs into coulombs by multiplying by 10 to the minus six, and then we plugged in the respective distances. Now, the total potential at point P will simply be the algebraic sum of the three potentials shown on the screen. In other words, Vp, or the potential at point P, will equal V1 plus V2 plus V3. So we should pick up our calculators and compute the values of V1, V2, and V3. And when you do that, you should get the following values for V1, V2, and V3. And then when you add them together, you should get approximately 56,424 volts. And this would be the total electrical potential at point P. So that is the correct answer to part A. Now, to answer part B, we need to begin by first recalling the following fact. The change in electric potential will equal the change in potential energy divided by whatever charge is being moved. We can multiply both sides of this equation by Q to solve for the change in potential energy. We can then expand delta V and write it as V final minus V initial. Now, we recall that initially the charge was located very far away from point P and that the question noted that we could assume the potential at a very far away location, or infinity, was zero. In other words, the VI for this charge will be zero volts. The V final is going to be the potential at point P, which we just determined to be this value over here. So we can plug that in for V final. And then the charge that is being moved is Q4, which has a value of negative 10 microcoulombs, Remember, we need to convert that into coulombs by multiplying by 10 to the minus six. So that's going to be the charge Q in the formula that we're developing right now. So why don't we go ahead and plug in all the known values. 
And when we compute this, we should get approximately negative 0.564, and then the unit for potential energy or any other form of energy will be in joules. Now, the negative sign indicates that this particle, Q4, has lost potential energy. And of course, energy conservation tells us that energy cannot just disappear. It has to be transformed into another form of energy. And so what's happening is, as this charge is losing electrical potential energy, it is gaining kinetic energy. So we're going to set the magnitude of this energy equal to kinetic energy. Now for the change in kinetic energy, we can write that as kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial. And the question notes that the particle is released from rest. So the initial kinetic energy will be zero. We can then substitute in the expression for kinetic energy, which of course is one half times the mass times the final speed squared. And we can then solve this equation for Vf. We can multiply both sides by two and then divide by the mass and take the square root. Now the mass was given to us. It was given as 150 grams. We'll have to convert that to the standard unit of kilograms, which of course is 0.15 kilograms. So let's plug that in for the mass m. And when we compute this, we should get approximately 2.75 meters per second. So this would be the correct answer to part b of the question. Again, the key concept was that the change in potential energy, or at least the magnitude of the change in potential energy, could be set equal to the change in kinetic energy because of the conservation of energy. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel. Remember, you can send in your own question to the email address on the screen, and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.